Now there are times when you need to add very specific functionality to forms with Elementor Pro, and there are still gaps in what can actually be achieved. So in this short video, I'll show you how you can take dynamic content for Elementor and add in a very powerful feature called PHP form validation. I'll take you through a couple of really simple examples to get your feet wet, and then it's up to you to get as creative as you need to. But first, before we go any further, this is a sponsored tutorial by Dynamic Content for Elementor. However, I'm not going to give you any opinions on the plugin. Instead, I'm simply going to demonstrate some of the features it offers, and then you can make your mind up if it's a plugin you'd like to look at in more detail. To keep this video short, I've already gone ahead and created a simple, typical form with Elementor Pro. As you can see, it contains a couple of fields, a name, an email address, a password field, and the submit form. And if we take a look on the left-hand side, you can see that's what's inside there. Now, at this point in time, we have no real kind of validation associated with passwords. For this example, we're gonna be taking dynamic content for Elementor's function to add PHP scripts into our form element. We're gonna use that then to use a little bit of code snippet to check to make sure that the password is a minimum of eight characters. Now, I'm by no means a wizard when it comes to PHP. In fact, I'm probably pretty basic. So what I'm gonna do for ease, and so you can actually just follow along with this if you wanna test it yourself, I'm gonna use examples from the actual documentation from Dynamic Content for Elemental, and I'll put a link in the description for this. I'm gonna use that code so you can copy and paste it in yourself so you can test it out and follow along exactly what I've done. Okay, so let's just quickly check on the form. Everything is set up, named, labeled, and everything we need. So if we go into advanced, for example, you can see we've got all the short codes. Everything is in place, including our password, which is one of our own added fields. So everything is set up inside there, and action has to submit, as you'd expect, collect submissions, email, those kinds of things. What we want to do, though, with dynamic content for Elemental install is come into the additional options. And inside there, we have a few different things we can use. We're interested in the custom PHP validation. So once we enable that, this opens up then a custom validation code block. We can now start adding in our custom validation directly inside here. So let's start off by taking a look at the documentation that comes with this particular feature with dynamic content for Elemental. There's not a lot of documentation there, but the feature is pretty simple and straightforward. So if we take a quick look, it tells us, first of all, you have to have Elemental Pro to get the forms function, which we should take as red. And then it kind of gives us the basic information about how this would work. So we're going to use any variable. We just have to make sure that variable starts with string fields, and then we use the actual name itself. So for example, if we come back over into our site, open any of our forms up, enter any of our fields, and you can see there's our short code for the field ID. So we just need to make sure that's wrapped up correctly to be able to use it. Now, speaking of using it, let me just show you how this works. So what we're going to do, if we scroll down, there's a simple example here, and we're going to use this as our, our key example, which is where we can check the password field that I've created to make sure that it has more than eight characters in it, and if it doesn't, to return an error message. So let's just copy that little bit of code from there. Let's hop back into our site. So now we need to make sure that, first of all, we've got a field set up called password and also labeled correctly. So let's open that up. You can see if we go into advanced, there's our ID password and our field code is inside there, our short code, I should say. So that first part is set up correctly. Next, we need to come down to the additional options. Open that up and you see we have a setting inside here called enable custom PHP validation. And that's the feature we're going to be using. So we'll enable that. That opens up a custom validation code box blocks, and it also tells us underneath basically how to use the format. And it's pretty much the same as what we saw at the top here, where it tells us what format to use this information in. Okay, so what we need to do now is simply drop in that little bit of code. So let's just paste that inside here. Let's open this up a little so we can see a bit better. And let's just quickly take a look at what's actually going on here. So the function that's being called is the string length. So you can see this strlen. That's basically a PHP function that says, check the string length of something. In this example, the field using the format that I've specified we need to use, the field named password, and make sure that it's not less than eight characters. If it is a less than eight characters, therefore it returns an error, then you can see that we can check the field again, which is the password field, and also then tells us what the error message that will be output is. In this case, the password required at least eight characters. Okay, so that's all we need to do. Like I say, if you're not strong in PHP, 
Don't worry too much about it. Chances are you don't really need to use a lot of features inside here, but you might want to do something simple like checking this particular function to ensure that your character length is eight characters or whatever. And obviously you can change this to whatever you want. If you want to say 10 characters, well, we'll just change that to 10 characters and we'll change the error message to say 10 characters. Simple as that. So now we're saying that it checks to make sure that the password is 10 characters or more. Let's just update or save this field, uh, this page, I should say, and then we'll test it out. Okay, so let's test this out and we'll just put in some basic details and we'll try a password that isn't long enough. So we'll say submit form and you can see password requires at least 10 characters. So we've set that up. That's now checking validation and ensuring that we meet that 10 character limit. If not, then it pulls up this error message telling us that it isn't working correctly. So that's the first kind of thing we can do. And that's a really simple example of how you can use this kind of function. But there's a lot more you can do with it. Like I say, if you're comfortable working with PHP and you have a basic understanding, you could do a lot with this to make sure that your forms are a lot more intuitive and specify exactly what you want to check against and those kinds of really useful things. Okay, so let's try another example. I've removed any kind of check-in we have now under the additional options. You can see there's nothing going on in there to check our password. Let's add a new field in. And we're going to add a date field in, so a nice date picker. So we'll choose the option for a date. And we'll just give this some labels and placeholders and stuff like that. And we'll set this to HTML5. Jump into advanced and we're going to give this an ID of date. And like I say, the ID is important because this is how we reference this inside our pieces of PHP code. Okay, so what we've done now is we've added a date picker in. So we now need to add some form of validation to make sure that things will work. So we'll go to our additional options again, enable our custom PHP validation, hop back over into our documentation, and we're going to use this second example. I'll just explain what's going on here because it's very similar to what we've already seen. So let me just paste that inside there. Now, what this is doing is this is checking the field of date. So we just named this date to making sure that we've got that consistency of naming. And you can see that it returns a value if something doesn't happen. So in other words, if the date using the year, month, day format is less than today's date, then what it's going to do is going to return a error message that says you can't choose a date before today. So it's just basically saying you can't choose a date prior to the current date. So again, we'll update this. We'll simply come over then and test this out. So we'll preview our changes. There's our form. Just make sure we've got a fresh copy inside there. And we'll just drop in all the relevant details. And we'll just make this password shorter as well. And I'm going to show you why in a second. So we'll set that in there. So now let's just choose a date. And we'll just choose a date from prior to where we are now. We'll submit our form. And we get the error message. You can't choose a date before today. However, no error message because our password is short. Because we got rid of it. So what can we do to handle that? Pretty straightforward, really. We can just add in both those checks. So let's just make a bit of space above this. We'll hop back over to this section and we'll copy that little bit of code from there again. And we'll simply paste that in at the top. So now we've got two checks going on. Check in that the password is eight characters or more and that the date is later than today's date. So again, we'll update that. We'll preview our changes refresh to make sure we've got the latest copy on there and we'll do the same again. So what I'm going to do is I've set my email. I set my password to be too short and we'll set the date. And again, we'll set this to prior to today's date, hit submit form and we get the password requires at least eight characters. Now you may be thinking this isn't working at all. It's pulling up the fact we need eight characters or more but the actual date isn't being checked against. And that's because you're basically going to have these cascading down. So what is happening is that first condition is being checked. So the first condition is to check that the password is eight characters. What's happened now is it's kind of stopped at this point until we correct that issue. So once we correct that and we go past eight characters and we'll submit the form a second time, you can see now that's been confirmed. That's working fine. So what's happening now is it's cascading down to the next section, which is to check that the date is in the format that we want and it isn't prior to today's date, which in this case, obviously it is. So once we correct that and we'll put that to tomorrow's date, for example, submit our form, everything now goes through as it should do. So they are working. So if you think it's not checking everything, it's going to check the first one. If it fails at that point, it'll check the second one, the third one, and so on and so forth. So that's how you can set that up. So it is all working correctly. 
So that's a couple of simple examples on how to use it. And like I say, if you are someone that's comfortable with PHP and you've been looking for this kind of feature to work with your forms in Elemental Pro to expand what you can do with them, then this might give you all the features you need. You can get stuck in and start adding in your own validation via PHP. And to learn how to get more out of dynamic content for Elemental, check out this playlist next. As always, all of the applicable links are in the description below. And if you've made it this far in the video, well, please feel free to hit that thumbs up button. And if you enjoyed it, why don't also hit the subscribe button and slap the bell icon. However, if you didn't get value from the video, well, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice as that works pretty well too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tetson. Until next time, take care.